I'll see y'all on, on Friday at Courthouse and Old 25. Can you give us an update yeah, on what you're doing study? We had an email. Some of you are aware we, we've been communicating with Mark Thomas with MDOT about the intersection at, at Courthouse and South Montgomery about what to do there. Courthouse and Old 25. Old 25. And uh, they, sometime back, asked that we want, they want some updated traffic count. He was very honest. He sent me an email last week that said we took the traffic count, but we messed up the data. We don't, we're not relying on the data, so he wanted to recount, and then we're going to try to do that over this LSU weekend so they would have a match. So I, I should be able to touch back with him tomorrow or so, get updated traffic data. And, you know, they hadn't forgot us, but they, they just hadn't got there. All right. I've got other than that all year. That's all I have. Got, got one thing. I had a call today, the slip ramp on Highway 82, right there where, where you slip off to go to Green 9. Uh, right there where the industrial park is being. If, right. you're, if you're traveling uh, going west, west, going west, if you're traveling west and you take the slip ramp by the exit ramp off of 82 to go up 389. You know, you can either take a right and go 389 north or left and go back into Starville or go straight across and come back down on 82. Okay. You know, there's been a couple deadly wrecks right in there. And there's been a couple of uh, wrecks that did some damage, but it didn't kill anybody. But today I got a call from a lady. She had just witnessed almost another deadly wreck. For whatever reason, when, when people, and I don't know if they get off in the wrong place or what, but they'll get off the exit, come up to 389 and keep straight across to go back down. <coughs> yeah, what did they, they decided they've taken the wrong exit and they just and, and they going right back on 82. And for whatever reason, I think a lot of times they don't realize they have to stop. Yeah. For, for whatever reason. My question to you is, can you get with MDOT and see if they allow maybe rumble strips as they're approaching that stop sign or something to, to indicate to them that they're going to have to stop I, I when they get to 389 before they just jump across. I make two calls tomorrow, one to Mark Holly, which is the district engineer in Tupelo, and also to Mark Thomas, the same guy we're talking to in the house because he's yeah. got a traffic control with him. But I'll let Mark know, and they'll want some accident data from the sheriff's department, too. Let, let, let me tell you something. I, I contacted them on something. I noticed it on maybe service road. Right. So they put the new lights up. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is when so, when a car gets close to the intersection on 82, caution lights right. go on. So people, right. when those lights come on, they don't think they have to stop. They think it's a caution. Okay. I tried to get them to do red facing maybe Sturgis and yellow fa on 82. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, they said they would not change it. So right there on 389. Same way on 389. We'll, we'll need traffic data on, or accident data on that intersection, okay. but I'll, I'll talk to Mark about both of them. I'll have to call the city. That's inside the city. I think there's, if I'm not mistaken, there have been two deaths that have occurred right now. Okay. And, that's, and a lot of red. We, we can initiate the conversation anyway. <coughs> uh, most people think there should be a traffic light at old 25 and uh, poor house. Is there a remote possibility you think that that might happen? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, we're waiting on them not to give us some information on what they suggest, so I, I don't know. To say there's not a remote response, you know, possibility, I wouldn't say that. I think it is a possibility. It's a possibility, yeah. Right. That's, what, okay. That's what I want to hear you say. It's a possibility. You got the email I sent you about the down. Yeah, it, we've scheduled it. I passed it on to John Weaver. He's done it the last couple of times. He's got it on there. Like <laughs> the member two years runs around pretty, pretty frequently. I think like every six months. All right. That's all I got, Joe. Anything else, Mr. Prince? If not, I think you got what you need. We certainly appreciate your time. Have a great Thanks, evening. Right. Thanks, Mr. Prince. Next item, Star Arts Council report. Mr. Bateman, good evening, sir. Thank you. I'm John Bateman. I'm the executive director of the Arts Council. I also brought with me Nancy Leifer, who is uh, at Renaissance Bank and our um, board treasurer. And I wanted uh, to bring one of my board members so you guys can get to know us a little bit better. I'm going to tie Nancy closer to the board so y'all remember Faith that used to write for the Starville Daily News. Faith is Nancy's daughter. And Ms. Margaret Bateman. 
That's the model. Okay, now I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been knowing him ever since high school. Yeah. Uh, the teacher and I graduated from high school. Yeah. Yeah. So now the picture's on. <laughs> Tied in now. Well, we were nice. Tied in. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. I, I like to come to the county at least once a year, but I'm, I'm available more than that if the county ever feels it's necessary or with any of you. But I'd like to report on what the Arts Council has been doing and what we plan to do because we are a grant recipient from the county and we're really grateful for that support. Uh, a lot of folks don't understand how much this support really means to us because grant funding constitutes, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, about 35% of our operating budgets, uh, both government and private grants, and uh, about 22% comes from individuals. And uh, none of that includes the in-kind support we, we get. If we had to pay for everything that we benefit from directly, we'd go out of business into. We get about $50,000 worth of income support from various businesses and, and individuals. So, um, so your funding helps us go a long way. And one of the things I wanted to chat with you about was last year, or this, our fiscal year ends June 30th. Last year for us, but it's this year, Cotton District Arts Festival, we canceled because of a lightning storm that morning. And that had a tremendous impact on on the area and the vendors and, and the attendees as well as, as the Arts Council. We were funded uh, about 14,000 in booth fees and some other lost revenue. We ended the year in the red, but we felt like that that was the right call to make. Uh, a tornado did eventually touch down that day and, and um, it was not an easy decision, but, but we are working on plans for this next year and trying to come up with some alternatives um, and working on that through the year. But, but some of the good news for this next year I want to share with you guys is this year is our first formal annual campaign. We're going to operate more like the university foundations. Um, we've received additional grant commitments already, and um, despite the loss, we did not tap into some reserves that we had. So that's been a, a good year in uh, for us so far. Um, some of the program updates last year, I talked about art partners. That's the after school art education program. We were at two sites. We're now at four sites. Uh, this is free to the location, we provide an artist to teach after school classes for youth at um, youth, well it used to be Youth Explosion, it's now called PrEP, it's at Christian World Mission. Uh, at Pecan Acres, they have an after school program for youth who live in public housing. Uh, Jail King Center and Southern Extended Day. Uh, this year, Art in the Park, we've decided to rotate parks, so this Saturday is Art in the Park. Uh, weather pending, it is at Jail King Park, and so then next year we're going to rotate probably the McKee Park before we, so Mon Creek Park before we go back to McKee Park. And we feel like that that's important to make sure we're reaching all pockets of the community and, and making sure that we're engaging. It's a free event. If you haven't been, please go. Please take your kid. Your kids have to take you, but it's uh, they get to do art activities and take home whatever they get to make. And uh, that's one of our, our, our more fun events to, to engage in. Uh, we do a pumpkin painting booth at Pumpkin Palooza. This year we also did a painting booth at Strutwell Community Day. Uh, both of these are just part of our way to share with the community uh, art enrichment and art education because we believe that it is a workforce development skill. It helps build bright, creative minds and, and problem solvers. And we think about uh, a construction, w regardless of what type of line of work you're going into, that, that creative skill set is going to help both the person and the community. And just as a problem solver, as a thinker, when you think about architects and, and contractors, and do you want buildings that look like cinder blocks, or do you want buildings that actually make it an appealing community? And so uh, summer scholarships we give last year, we, this has grown rapidly. Last year we gave around 23 scholarships for a total of about $7,000 for art enrichment programs in the summer to kids in Octavia Hawk County. They apply, it's based on need and merit. Uh, it's scored by former Starkville residents who no longer live here, so it helps sort of keep it fair, and, and uh, that's grown fairly rapidly. And some of, the, some of these scholarships are going for, for small amounts at these programs, and um, so it's something we're really proud of and hope to continue to grow uh, so that families can have access to this type of thing in the summertime. And one of the things we did this last year was uh, we organized with three other arts organizations the only statewide art exhibit known that was organized outside of Jackson. There's a lot of attention on the arts in Jackson, and there's tremendous talent outside of Jackson that doesn't get enough attention or visibility, and so that's something that we did as an exploration last year. The exhibit was here for a few days, and 
for actually for a month. And we're going to try it again this next year with um, Oxford, Ocean Springs, and, and Greenville Arts Center. So our goal is to build a community through art and, and try to do as many zero to low cost admission programs uh, that are family oriented to, to provide things for people to do to, to make Starkville a destination city, to make Octavio County a, a great place to live, and uh, to keep that talent here in the county. So if you guys have any questions for me, I'm, I'm here. Um, we'll have another annual report hopefully soon that I can share with you guys a little bit more than that. So. I can just say um, for a ring up location, I think kind of a big place that would be covered. Uh, can you can you wave a lot of those rules? <laughs> <laughs> what rules would you be talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we have a long list of rules on that site, so I'd love to come talk to you about it if we could uh, uh, wave some of those. Because that's I mean, you're not going to take the walls or anything, right? No, no. But some <laughs> like some of the rules are the the it, music that has to go out there has to be uh, produced through MSU music makers. And so if we can talk about that and maybe get us a waiver on some of that. Because we are the rain out location for Fort Worth Parish and since we've become the rain out location, they've never got a rain out. Sounds <laughs> like an It is. <laughs> well, I, I, I tell people if it was just the rain, they could have gotten wet. Right. Yeah, I was more worried about the, the lightning and the, and the tornado, so. Yeah, I might have really had people in there. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I'll, I'll talk to you because there, there's a, a lot of rules on there that, that we currently wouldn't qualify, but if there's a way to negotiate those, then I'd love that. Uh, are you providing any scholarships, uh, Ms. Blake? So I'm talking about for individuals going to college to uh, major in art or something like that at the next level. Uh, thank, you for level. That, thank you for that question. We used to do that, and then uh, the interest in that declined, and the last year we had them, no one applied. And so we decided that funneling those funds into a summer scholarship program might have a greater long-term impact because our college scholarships were small. They were, they were maybe $1,500, which might buy supplies and books for a year. But we realized if we could give youth in need access to art programs for five summers, so because if they're in the public school system, they, they've got access to it during the school year. So if we can give them that bridge <coughs> in the summertime, that $1,000 spread over five summers has a greater potential impact than buying books for at the collegiate level for a year. And so it was a strategic move. We, we used to have those, but uh, eventually, we had no application, and so uh, you're the first person who has asked me about it in the two years since we've, we've increased the summer scholarship program. So, but that was the rationale behind that. Any more questions? Has a great impact. Seems it does have a great impact for students who are still in high school. Long term, that's what we're looking for. We want the we want the bigger impact. Thank you. Certainly appreciate you all coming. Thank you all. Thank so you. Appreciate the work you do for the community. All right. We do have an addition on the agenda. I'm going to slip Ms. Benson in at this moment. She has an item to take up the presentation. Good evening, Ms. Benson. Good evening. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And I hope all of you are as well on yes, this dreary evening. I just wanted to let you know that you know, the last meeting here, we talked about being environmentally clear, that's all the things are going to start rolling. Um, the uh, new industrial part, there was a conference call today, and uh, Mr. Joe Max Higgins is, as you know, being the type of person he is, he is ready to put the ball in the arena and let's roll. So uh, he is pushing the engineer to go ahead and get the plans and specifications finalized. So uh, I don't have exact advertising dates, but tonight I would like your permission to go ahead and prepare the uh, advertisement following the procurement guidelines set forth by the ARC grant. And uh, it looks like it may be the middle of December before we're able to hold this, but I would like your permission to go ahead and prepare that advertisement and get it to the paper. It, I don't know that we'll be back at a board meeting before then. So. Well, 
one who knows who Brother Williams, the second one who knows who Brother Howard, or the equipment concerning the motion. This is for the construction of the elevator. Right. Yeah. All those in favor, there will be no matter for the vote tonight. The motion passes you now. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. All right, next item of business, uh, Chancellor Clerk business, Ms. Livingston. I don't have Moving right along, and kind of business administration, Ms. Gary. Payroll changes. What's the pleasure board on the payroll changes? We're doing the first set. Most for approval on the first set. This is one I had a chance to look over. One that's in the packet. Okay, we've got a set that's from uh, 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 Road Department, Road Department, and Sheriff's Department, Sheriff's Department, and E911. Well, this, this is Road Department. This is the jail and the Road Department. Okay. 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 So the sheriff's department right no, now. The, no, no, you they're going to be separate. You need separate. Three sets. Three sets. And of course, it's a All those in favor, let me know about the public vote change. Uh, What's your passion now? All right, the other two sets, which includes uh, 911 and sheriff's yeah. department request. Yeah. 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 Over the sheriff's request. Request a lady for the, uh, for the sheriff's department. Motion to approve on that one. Okay. Second. Second. Motion by Supervisor William. Second by Supervisor Montgomery. Then quick, second motion. All those in favor, let me know on the pro vote time. Motion right. passed in there. All right. The third set, which includes the 911. Motion by Supervisor Miller. Second by Supervisor Montgomery. Are there any questions concerning that? All those in favor, let me know on the pro vote time. Motion passed in there. Motion passed in there. Motion passed in there. Say they even have them grouped together. 
and not all of them are rented. They say they bring it to them like 80% occupancy, if they always don't have 80% occupancy. So any rental home that you've got is an if, 80%? If, it, if you've got somebody that's got multiple properties, then it would be like 80%. You're always dealing for 80% as opposed to 100%. I, I don't think it should be the board's responsibility to determine if this guy or this lady is, has got somebody in this apartment or not. I, I think it's going. It, it should be on the property owner. If he if he drops down to fifty percent, he he needs to be the one come up and show that. Listen, I've only got fifty percent of my property rented. Uh, exactly. You know, not and not. Not for us to have to try to decipher through that type of stuff, but you know, we just we just we lose a lot. Do they need to go to the bill each renter? To do that, would they need to go to the billing department and show proof or her office? Go to the billing office and show proof, and hopefully we can work close with the Columbus office over there and. Well, if we're only going to, whatever we might get paying for, then they won't bill us for picking up. Right. Let, let me throw this out there. What if they have a a lot of, let's say, homes or apartments together instead of paying uh, 13 for each person? What if they decide they want a dumpster? I mean, they can. so, you know, because we have a lot of people in our time. community that that's how they make a living is their owners and they have rental property. So I think we need to think through some of these things before we make a decision and, and they but but they they should be passing that cost on to the renter well that's what i'm asking can they pay. do they can they have the option not, not to not, not if they not if they're duplex not if they're individual units if they are big multi multi-unit like apartment complexes they fill them in dust with a dumpster but otherwise they are house to house but I'll ask you why. Because that's what the Attorney General said. That we bill for anything that's individual units or duplexes. That um, large complexes, like big apartment complexes. Well, say the links or whatever, they're not, that's the thing, they're not billed for each individual 13. The links, they, they're, they're several right. units in one building, right? I'm, con I'm, I'm confused. I mean, are we saying that? Are we saying like a duplex would be one way, but an apartment complex would be another? And I'm trying to make yes. sure I understand yes. what we're doing. Yes, a big apartment complex can be commercial, but do and be built as a commercial customer, but duplexes. Individual units, mobile home parks, are all out to house. They're ours. I, I would suggest, and this is just a suggestion, if before we get too deep, I don't, I don't know that we're necessarily going to make a decision about some of this to, tonight anyway. Why don't you you get me on track, and then we come up with a policy that we that we can present to make it okay? Because I'm afraid I'm going to get the wording. Okay, yeah, but the thing of it is, I don't want to go along with this because we're going to have to send out notices okay. and we need to get started and get it in process before they start dealing us with the duplexes. Well, I think process. we can actually do the numbers. I'm, I, what I'm trying to do is make sure that we get our policy correct the way, because I'm afraid I'm going to end up messing up what it is that you want without, if, 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 without me going ahead and getting something written down the way we want it on the front end, I guess is what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Roberts, I would ask that you go back and look at the AG opinion as well. I know that I have um, people that have large rental properties, and instead of having each house with the garbage, they'd like to have a big dumpster and pay for that. They said it would cut down on the trash, you know, even in the area. So I'd like to know what would be the options for these property owners, because we do have a lot of property owners that we're just going to say, you know, take the responsibility off of the renter and put it onto the property owner. I think they need to be able to have some maybe some options if we even approve this. So we I'd like to see ask, what we do have some apartment complexes that we provide dumpsters for, but they have to pay house to house. And that's the way Miss Brown, when she was out there, said it. In other words, you still pay that thirteen dollar a month per 
for you. Sure. But and then if dumpster. you wanted a dumpster, you pay the rental fee on the dumpster extra. That's the way it was always presented to us now. Because some property like owners have asked me rent. before, we want to put dumpsters right. instead of individual garbage cans. Instead of 15 or 20 garbage, garbage cans, cans in a row. Yeah, they right. can do that, but they but still they're still have to pay, pay for the and it's pretty simple. And don't get on top of that. It's pretty simple. You know, when a tenant moves in, the, the landlord just let them know, listen, there's a thirteen dollars and fifty cent fee that's added to your rent monthly, regardless. Then they don't have to worry about trying to pay it. The garbage the the, the landowner or property owner writes a check monthly for whatever the amount is and, and, it, and it's pretty simple, you know. We don't have to worry about a tenant moving off and, and owing the county fifteen hundred dollars when they leave and th things like that. You Look, know, we, we to, get our money. To throw it even more strange, to, I had a question that was asked of me that I didn't know whether, and I didn't think we even have a, had an issue whether this was allowed or not allowed, but whether or not a private company could go secure a deal with the apartment and actually bring the garbage out to the location. I mean, this was a private individual wanting to, to contract, and I told him that I, that, that you're digging into some stuff that I don't think that the board really would have, even have an issue to, to okay or not okay. So th there were some strange dynamics that are kind of getting created through having apartment complexes that maybe we haven't seen in the past. So I, I'd like to at least dig into it so I at least understand what the heck we're even doing. Right digging into on some of this. And I know that you guys, uh, are, we've got some good supervisors that are probably got more information that I'd like to pick y'all's brains as far as how this, this board actually works anyway. So okay. thank you, I, I do appreciate that time. I just think it's time again to have a conversation with all things garbage uh, to our county. Yes sir. Any, any of it, all of it. One thing we did find out when we were having our meeting, the ones that they were building in Percy Store, they were building them, but they were picking it up when they were picking up our household garbage until we were paying the dump fee out. Yeah. So they're going to have to stop yeah. doing that. Yeah. So there's you know, several things that's always falling through the cracks, and there's a lot of stuff that has fallen through the cracks on the iron. But we can bring this up at the next board meeting after Ross has a chance to look at whatever. You and I will get together sometime this week, that's okay. okay. Next thing, I wanted to, I put the MAS debt set off program information in the packet. I'm not wanting us to vote on that or anything tonight. But I want y'all to consider it. However, I'm not 100% for it. One thing we have to have is a social security number and we don't have those yet on our trash customers. We've got to get that. Yeah. Well, you have to appoint a program uh, coordinator to oh, yeah, that's on yeah. the side to uh -huh. coordinate the whole program. Uh -huh. And also, MIS, I think, is going to take their 25% off the top. So, not really, but I know the city just went through something with this, and I wanted to bring this to y'all. Something else that I'm a little concerned with is some of the debt. Some of the debts that they're wanting sent over there are even tied through our court system, and and I'm a little I'm a little unsure about how they're asking for this. Some of these things are not have not been. I mean, we have a lot of debt load that, that people haven't even been to court, and so some of the things they're asking for. If we do decide to do it, I think that. We need to separate some of this stuff out, and I, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. And that's state, that's state call, not, not federal. Just state yes, sir, just state. state. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving along to uh, County Bid and Supervisor. Call request, start at West Point. Uh, yes, um, this is a gentleman that has property on both sides of the road. He, um, so on the right-hand side of the road, we looked at him at Harbor because he built home out there, and he would like to be able to access the 10 acres on the other side of Sturgis West Point Road, but he's not going to build a home. <coughs> he actually wants to build a pet cemetery, maybe. Um, 
you know, for that, so that's what he saw. So I need a culvert so somebody can, uh, the address is going to be across the road from, I'll give you the address, um, 3875 Sturgis West Point Road. It will be across the road from that. And he just wants a culvert put in so he can access his 10 acres. Got, got a motion, is that second? Got a motion, a second on that request. Any questions beside the motion? Is he eventually going to have to do a site development plan or have any type of? Oh, uh, well, I, I don't know. I thought you know, he would check, uh, check into that. Right now, he just wants to, just to get to the get, and just access it. Any more questions? All those in favor, let me know that for the vote. Motion passed. Motion passed. Motion passed. Motion passed. Motion passed. Your appointment is coming up on the first on the Lincoln Solid Waste Management Board. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I wanted to serve you. All right, you got a motion back. Motion by Supervisor Wade, a second by Supervisor Montgomery. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor, let me know about the public vote. Motion passes again. Does anybody, I have some some questions about the drainage easement that we're going to have draining easement request that I'd like to present to the board. Does anybody else have any tonight? Well, we need to get off on private property to do some drainage. I, I think, maybe I've got my... I got uh, two addresses here. One is for uh, Strong Gun Club. Uh, it's located at 4027 16th Section Road. 4027 16th Section Road, property owners of the Starbucks Gun Club. What do they want? Uh, uh, clean up the ditch. Got some backup here, and the water, the ditch needs to be open on the other side of the road to the Gun Club property. Okay, and the second one is at 1942 16th Section Road. This property is adjacent to property that belongs to. Leslie Millens and also the lowest power. And this is a uh, cover that's right on the on the property line and it needs to need some attention also. And all this is just clean. No pipe putting in nothing that's just going digging out the ditch like it's already in there. 1942 16th Section Road, uh, yeah. property of Leslie Millens and the lowest power. Mm -hmm. for approval with uh, uh, attorney you you don't need to respond to that any these are going to be private private ditches that service the culvert that, that goes on these roads. The culvert goes on these roads, mm -hmm. and these ditches are takes the water away from the road. Okay. Right, 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 right. That's what time, but right. we still need to need to thread on the minutes before right. we get on the private property. I got, I got a motion for approval. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor, let me know by the public vote side. And I didn't know whether you all had anything else, but we can put them all together. Because uh, I know, you know, we, we just need to have it up spread on the minute. So mm -hmm. if something is said, then it'll be on the minute. And then we'll have the document already. Uh, this is the one for the gun club. And Mr. Baggett has the one for uh, Ms. Miller. And the one that we approved last time, he has that one also. But of course, you know, it's not the same gun on we got all, all the documentation for it. Supervisor, do you have anything else from this report? I, uh, I did have a couple of things. Um, on October the 29th at 11.30, we will have the ribbon cutting for the Locksley Way project. Um, that's at 11.30. We'll park at the church on the corner right there. So I want everybody to put that on your calendar. Um, what, what, Dr. Keenum, what, you said ribbon cutting. the ribbon cutting for the Locksley Way project. If you remember, this is the the first project that we did as the county, this is the first time that the counties are ever taking the lead on a TAP grant project. And we partnered with Mississippi State University and the city on this project. Um, so it will be at October 29th at 11.30. And that's where we'll have uh, Dr. Keenum, people from Mississippi State will join us. Uh, people from MDOT, you know, Schaefer, city and the county will all be there. Um, I wanted to share a couple of things with you uh, about this. I'm sorry, I 
actually hold on this up for one. Okay. Um, this is the first two-way cycle track in the state of Mississippi. This was a six to one return on investment. MDOT, Pat Grant was at 800K, MSU, the city and the county were at 133K. The construction cost came in 4% under the bid. We installed a multi-model stop, stop that combines pedestrian cycles and smart system. We completed the connection between McKee Park and Mississippi State University. We overcame limited right-of-way and utility conflicts to make the two-way cycle track. And this is the first one in the state of Mississippi that's built like that. So this was the first time that the county ever took the lead on this uh, project. And I uh, commend everybody um, that, uh, that we worked on this together. I, we did a great thing, so I hope everybody will come to the ribbon cutting. Connection University too. See a lot of people using it. So that's good. The city's got several they're working on too. So that's going to make all that even better. That's all those, all those uh, I'm going to mention something else just because it's a county property. Um, I don't know if you got to see, but uh, the uh, Horse Park and the Rotary Rodeo won the um, Justin Boot Best Footing Award for our 2019 Professional Rodeo. And I want to elaborate a little bit more on what a big deal this is. Um, there are nine states in the southeastern circuit of the rodeo. Um, and there are 54 other professional rodeos that we were competing against. The contestants of the women's professional rodeo voted on us. And um, they awarded us with having the best footing of any of the professional rodeos. The second place was Somerville, Georgia, and the third place was Bonifay, Florida. So that tells you about the nine states that we're competing with. Um, we actually will accept this award um, in Las Vegas, Nevada, during the National Finals Rodeo. Um, we'll be on the stage. You'll have the top 10 cowgirls in the world that will walk across the stage and accept their trophy saddles. And after that, uh, Horse Park and the Rotarian uh, group will be called to the stage and will accept a um, award as well and a check from the Justin Boot Company. So I wanted to share that with you because this is a, a partnership, a county, county park. There is a cash award, that's correct. There is, yes. And we certainly appreciate all your hard work on that. Anytime you do anything out there, it makes us all, we all benefit from it. So we certainly appreciate that. Certainly do. Anything else from this report? No. Anything from this report? Sure, there's two things. Suburban. Suburban Bell. I had mentioned it before, but I guess to spread on the minutes, Lake Valley. Uh, I need to have that road. We've been waiting on some rain to happen, and uh, I need to seal that road up. It was one that we had, we just resurfaced, and the drought kind of got us Supervisor Dunn, second by Supervisor Miller, and the first Sunday morning. All those in favor, let it be known by the public vote saying, both the past and then. I do have one thing. Um, I would like to thank uh, Kristen and her group for installing smoke detectors. <coughs> we had in District 5 about 300 smoke detectors to be installed, and I got a list of those individuals. And I believe you have installed around a hundred. Yes, that yes. ninety done. That ninety done. So you're doing a great job, and I appreciate you. And the, the people in District Five appreciate you for getting those smoke detectors uh, installed. Uh, they're still calling me about them, and, well, we and you're still moment, and you're still working on them. Thank you. Yeah. So don't you have some more in those other districts? Oh, yeah, that right. So you're doing a good job. A couple other things for information I need to just, just make you aware of. The, on tomorrow, did you all get an invite uh, from the mayor's coordinating this, dealing with a potential uh, rails to trail project they want to do with the, uh, I can't say abandoned, but with the, the rail line that comes throughout Chicago County 
and Duke Scarborough has not been utilized. It's still open, but it's just not been utilized. Uh, I know that they tried before. Oh, you are. That has been tried before. Yeah, they haven't made that attempt. Not from not from this or try. I think it's been talked about before. But, yeah. but KCS still has the uh, they still have the line quote unquote open. They haven't abandoned it, and so I think the mayor. Is putting together a meeting. I don't know what y'all got in. I think y'all got in by two. That meeting is tomorrow at 10. That's correct. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock tomorrow. And I don't know if any of y'all are planning on attending, but you'll be more than welcome to come. But also, did y'all get the notice about the rural broadband workshop that's going to yeah. be held in Verona? That's, that's tomorrow. Anybody yeah. attending that tomorrow? I would like to. If you will. I wanted to go to this meeting, but I don't know what that's That's what kind of stuck between. But we need to have people at both meetings. I'm, that's, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm going to say. to the broadband. Okay. okay. If you go to the broadband, I'll go to the rail to trail meeting. I'll go to the rail to trail. I'm just saying, I support the rail to trail in the community. I mean, it's like areas like um, Maiden and some of those areas that, that can make destination points. You know, I mean, it, it really can. Um, it's really been it's been beneficial in a lot of other areas. You're talking about the the trail that goes down. I mean the the track that goes down Highway 20. It's the one that yeah. goes right there through yeah. town. Yeah. 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 It, it goes through Bradley, goes Sturgis. through Sturgis, 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 and even goes over over the Chalky. So you know Sturgis Maven, you know that can be destination points. Thirty five miles maybe. Forty four. Forty four. Yeah. yeah. It, it it was it was talked about pretty heavily one one uh, a few years back, but it's kind of puckered out. So maybe this will. And then you'll see a truck goes down that goes down there that keeps the, the track open and that thing solves. The good thing about it is, is if it ever needed to be reversed, they're not abandoning it. They can always come back so in. They can and yes, they can. Back I checked into that. Now there is one downside that y'all just need to be aware of that there are tax dollars that they're associated we, with it. We are we get from we get from it. Now that being said, if they abandon it, we're not gonna get anything. I mean so and if it goes Right. The city city yeah. What's the amount? Eighty-five thousand dollars this year. Even though there has not been any substantial activity on it, I'm gonna say in the last it's fifteen it's years, yeah, it's yeah. increasing. We keep getting a check every year. Yeah. 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 That's what yeah. I mean. That's what I'm doing. I'm the about coming and doing some cleaning up on this maybe. And they and they sure can get a little cleaning on the board. And it would involve Clay County would have to agree to it, I think. And Chalk County. Period. We're not going to get anything. So it's an option for it's an option for them to be able to not have to pay the taxes, but yet they get to keep the taxes. Right. That's that's the benefit. They get it to the community until they it may be there in spring. But if they abandoned it, that probably goes back to the property owner. And that can get to be very yeah. Yeah. sticky. Yeah. So you mean the property owner would own that railroad right there? If, in front if, of if, if they were to abandon it. Which I don't know that that's necessarily going to ever happen. However, it could. I mean, I don't uh, where's this meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Where's this meeting? Yeah. There's going to be a, a, a plan to be. Uh, 10 o'clock. What trails are we talking about? Are we talking about walking trails? Are we going to ride? Uh, 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 walking bicycles. Walk 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 <laughs> What's the, name of, what's the name of the trail? Tanglefoot. Uh, Tanglefoot. Like yeah. It starts and there's another one in south of Michigan. What's the name of the trail? Yeah. One thing, make the track out of it. Tanglefoot is a leader. And they send that trail. Yeah. 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 Or make the track. It includes tourism to areas that were very rural communities. I think some they allow dogs on it. No cats or something. A rail board has to be established, just like the solid waste boards. And uh, there are rules and regulations. No vehicles are allowed on it. Uh, there are. They will allow walking, bikes, uh, some golf carts, but you have to buy a permit for the golf cart. Uh, the only. Uh, they in fact they maintain it with golf carts. They the authority leases. I believe three golf carts. They work with the. Sheriff's departments of all of the counties. Uh, they uh, have one full time employee that monitors it and maintains it, but uh, there are a lot of I's to dot T's to cross. There's a lot to it. Uh, Three Rivers Planning and Development District is the administrative agency for Tanglefoot. And I don't know 
anything at all about the one that goes out of Harmonsburg, which was one, which was the first one. But Tanglefoot did just receive an award from the mm -hmm. Trails Conservancy, so uh, it, it's uh, it's been a big deal for them. But uh, it has been um, a long endeavor. I think it took them twelve years. I think so, and uh, you know it's not going to happen overnight. But uh, you've got to start somewhere, and the, the mayor has a great interest in it. And uh, she's asked that we facilitate a, a meeting place. So that was that was a, a real real old board. Monica Banks was a member. Of. That was different. Well, well, that's different. Yeah, different. That's what that was here. Okay. Yeah. Then Daniel yeah. on it too. Yeah. 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 Is there, is there, has there been any, uh, if, if there's a lost revenue on the tax side of it, has there been any evidence to suggest that, that, that it could be balanced out by tourism or something like that? that could Not for the county, I just goes. I mean, if there's any money that come in, it would probably be. I, I, you know, I, I'd have to look at any studies, but I would you know, doubt it. You know, that, you, when you're doing this conversation, you have to have a cost of benefit right. uh, conversation. If if it's it's got to benefit the county and the city equally, we can't. Yeah. You know, we got some big overpasses too. Right. Trying to go, what we're gonna do? Well, the 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 Trails largest percentage of tracks. Of the three counties that are affected, which would be Clay, Arkansas, and Choctaw. Our Tibahawk has the largest percentage. Is it all or nothing? I'm sorry? Is it all or nothing? Right. Is there a possibility of only getting a certain yeah. number? I don't know. I really don't know. Thank you. I don't know. You know, maybe it would be worth um, trying to do a study. I, I hate to when, when somebody says study, you know, you hate, I, you just sort of cringe, but there's so many unanswered questions right. with this endeavor because it's so new for this area. It, you know, it's, it's been proven to work in other parts of the state, but, um, you know, it maybe it would be worth going to one of the funding agencies like ARC to see if, if it indeed has a potential here. You know, some of the counties did something with all the old depots uh, in that county that where the train stopped at the depot. They did a, a deal with, with those that started pretty good. Maybe, I mean, I've talked to the mayor about that. You know, they've got old depots uh, that sit there where the, where the train is. My, my big concern is going to be if we're going after this, how's that going to affect other rent lanes that we might need to go after? And think about uh, what you got here just to take management of that. Well, I think it's about a given expense. Uh, well, you know, you got to maintain it. And, I, and a lot of times you want to put scrubs along the along the way, and you want to beautify it along the way to make people want to be out there walking. Well, and, and with it, there's a lot of building that comes along, and then you've got turnovers and operation. Established. You've got to have crossings, so agreements have to be worked out with those crossings. Those property owners have to. It, it, it really is. Sure. Which uh, Three Rivers Planning and Development District provided us some, with some information. So uh, unfortunately, they won't be able to be there tomorrow, but we've got that and we'll make it right there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else to come before the board before we proceed to adjourn for the month? If not, if you can get a motion to second stand adjourned to the first Monday in November. I think we all raise our hands. Uh, <laughs> motion, my supervisor, Bill, say my supervisor, Jeff. All those in favor? You all have a great evening. Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank you.